Hello guys and welcome back to the Simply Code programming channel. This is Vikesh and let's get started with today's topic which is about regular expressions or regex in Java. You may hear people calling it as, as regex or regex. Doesn't matter, you can call it anything as, as you want till the time you have the concept understood in the right way. I'll just call it as regex. So when we talk about regex, let's understand why do we need them and what are how Java actually provides support for that. So the basic idea behind regular expressions is, is to find a pattern in a, in a text corpus. If you have a lot of strings available, if you have any kind of text, any kind of string, and if you would like to find a particular pattern saying, okay, does this whole text paragraph contains any character or contains any number or contains any special characters or contains characters after numbers or numbers after characters. So if you would like to find those kind of patterns, in in your text corpus then you can and then that concept is called regular expression finding and java provides the support for that particular regular expression finding through a package called java.util.regex package so this is the package which you would need to use when you want to do any kind of regular expression finding in the text now you may want you may be thinking that why do i need to use this i already have the string handling methods right you can do substring you can find a particular character in the string etc but that is limited because it only and only provides string methods ways to manipulate and find and replace strings but regex is generic you can literally find any kind of character in your string it can be a special character it can be a square bracket it can be a multiply sign it can be a divide sign it can be like i said integer uh, uh, capital letters small case letters so any kind of pattern you would like to find java.util.regex can be used to find that kind of pattern now this package is very interesting and it provides lots of classes. And again, this is a very, very, very big topic and very complex topic. So we will just scratch the surface of it. And like I always say, whenever you would like to read more about it, go back and read the documentation. Currently the documentation I've opened is for Java version eight, but when you are reading it, you can go for the latest Java edition uh, uh, documentation. So with that, let's talk about some of the interesting classes which we will be dealing with. And we must know when we talk about regex in Java. So I already explained what are regular expressions. Uh, let's go to the interesting classes. The first class which we need to know about is the pattern class. So pattern class or an object of the pattern class will basically be representing a compiled regular expression. So you write your regular expression in a certain way. Regular expression has its own language, I would say, to uh, write the pattern. For example, if you would like to write a pattern saying that find, uh, uh, check if this particular text paragraph has the characters first, then the integers, then the characters, then this particular special character. So that is your pattern. You write that pattern, then you need to compile that pattern. To compile that pattern, you can use the pattern class. This, this class generally does not provide any kind of public constructors to you. So you cannot initialize the pattern object explicitly, but to create a pattern, you first, you need to basically call the static methods, uh, static method named as compile. So compile is the method which you need to use to compile your regular expression, which will then return the pattern object. Once you have compiled your uh, written your pattern and, and you compiled your pattern, the next class which you need to know about is the matcher class. Matcher class will provide that particular engine framework which will understand and interpret the pattern and then will try to find that pattern on the text paragraph which you are supplying and it will re result in true or false. If it finds that pattern, it will say true. If it's not finding the pattern, it will say false. So that's the basic idea. So you need to you need to know about the pattern class and you need to know about the matcher class. So it also does not, the matcher class also does not provide any kind of public constructors and you obtain a matcher object by calling the matcher method on the pattern object. So once you created a pattern object, just call the matcher on that particular object and that will get you a matcher object and it, it then you can use that object to find the patterns in that particular text corpus. There is also a dedicated exception, which is called pattern syntax exception, which will be uh, thrown whenever you have written the regular expression syntax incorrectly. Like I said, it has its, it has its own language. So you need to write the expression in a way regular expressions are supposed to be written and supposed to be understood. I will touch upon that in a while. But that's the that's the basic idea about the three classes. Now, when when you would like to find a pattern, it can be a string pattern, it can be some characters, it can be some predefined characters, some quantifiers, 
you can also create subgroups within the regular expression so there is a like i said there's a tons of functionality which is available in this particular concept and we will just cover some of the relevant ones or just just run through some of these concepts and then i will switch to a demonstration for example if we talk about the string literals then you can do the string matching for example if you want to find this particular word or this pattern this is just a text pattern right so if you would like to find this particular text pattern in the text string then you can write this particular text pattern as a string pattern inside the pattern object so that's that's about the string literals now let's move to some interesting ones like uh, like meta characters and the meta characters are very interesting because they have a special meaning for example if you write your regular expression like this where you say cat and then you say dot then when you are applying this particular uh, regular expression to find the match into a string it is only going to find the match for cat it is not going to find the match for cat dot because dot is a meta character in regular expression it has a special meaning it, it it does not mean dot but it has a special meaning and that special meaning basically means that even though the dot is not present it will basically mean that after cat it can be any character so the meta character dot means any character which is why you see this match succeeds because it will search for this pattern which it matches and after that it can be any character it doesn't care so even if it's s or d or whatever it will say true because cat was found a match so dot means any character uh, after the pattern you have specified similarly there are a lot of other characters special characters or meta characters like the ones which have been listed here question mark star plus dot on and all of these have their own dedicated special meaning they are not the, your your uh, normal uh, uh, arithmetic operators or other operators they have their special meaning when you are dealing with meta characters so do read about them in detail and i will be using a bit of meta characters in the example as well then the character classes are also very interesting uh, similar to the example which i told you before if you want to find a, a particular a string uh, or a particular integer into a into a text corpus then you can use the character class patterns for example you just put a square brackets and you write a b c this means that it will try to find exactly abc in the string if you put a cap in front of abc then it will try to match any character or find any character except a b or c so it's a negation similarly if you specify small a to z and capital a to z it means any character can be there between small case a to z and capital case a to z a to z inclusive similarly you can provide specific ranges like a through d or m through p so only the characters which will match the union of this condition will be returning true and rest of the uh, uh, if that if this particular uh, pattern is violated then you will get false so similarly there are you can build lot of complex combinations and permutations with these uh, special meta characters and character classes do read about these in detail if you are curious to know about it and there is tons of materials available on this on internet which you can read about to learn more about similarly there are predefined character classes as well dot is something which i which i already explained which means any character then you can use slash d to find a digit in a particular string or in a particular text corpus slash capital d is for non digit or you can use the classic negation condition as well slash s is for a white space character slash capital s is, is for a non white space character word non word so there are a lot of different examples so i think by now you would have built a decent understanding of what i'm trying to tell you is that you can specify these patterns compile them and then use the matcher so let's move to a very simple demonstration it's not a complex example but very simple example just to get the point across so i'm creating a regex string here and this is the pattern i've specified i'm saying any character star means any number of characters so it can be anything here then the string the the pattern expects an alphabetical uh, string or alphabetical section after that the alphabetical section should be followed by a numerical section and after the numerical section again it can be any character so this is my pattern i create a simple string with this regex pattern and like i mentioned in the documentation you call pattern.compile to compile the regular expression so i compile the regular expression i get the pattern object and after as again as per the documentation it said that you can call the matcher method on the pattern object to get a matcher object so i say pattern dot matcher and i provide my string on which i want to test it so i've just put a random string where there are some integers then there is some alphabets and then again there are some integers 
Once you have got the matcher object, just call matcher.find. This will return a boolean where you can test whether the uh, the matcher found a hit in the text corpus or not. If it found a match, the match found will be true. And if it didn't found the, uh, find the match, you will get a false value in this result. So with that understanding, let's run this program. So I get the output match found. Why did I get that? Because I said that start with anything. So it started with anything. I don't care what it is. It's an integer or any special character. I don't care. After that, there should be some alphabets. So there are some alphabets and right after alphabets, there should be some numbers. So again, there are some numbers. And after that, there can be any character, zero or more characters. So there is nothing here. That's why you see a match found. Let's do an interesting test here. Let me do this. I put A to Z again here. So now I'm saying start with anything, have alphabets, have numbers, and again after numbers, you should have some alphabet, which is not the case here because you start with something, you have alphabets, you have numbers, and after numbers, the string ends. There is nothing after that. So let's see what happens now. You get a match not found because this particular pattern, when got compiled and got applied on this particular string, did not find the string following the regex pattern which you have specified so this is a very simple example to show you how you can build patterns you can use groups concepts as well to group the patterns it can get very very complex and very very nasty so use them very wisely very carefully uh, and do read about the uh, documentation and other examples which i talked about to get more understanding and more comfortable with regex and that's all I want to cover in this particular session. In the next session, we will quickly talk about the NIO library in Java. And if you like this video, a thumbs up would be massively appreciated. And please don't forget to subscribe to Simply Code for more programming related videos. Thank you and we'll meet again in the next session.